This is an introduction to English grammar part one, types of grammars. This is for a course given at the University of Utah and my name is Karen. Our course objectives for the whole semester, uh, we have three main course objectives. The first one is to work on terminology commonly used to describe the grammar of English. The second is a basic description descriptive grammar of English, and the third is to talk about some issues that are associated with standard written English and its use at a university setting. Our lesson goals for today, for this presentation, uh, I want you to be able to define the following, grammar, prescriptive grammar, descriptive grammar, and mental grammar. Okay, students should recognize also that a conflict between prescriptive grammar and mental grammar is often what causes our grammar questions. Um, English majors in this class are going to enjoy the discussion of what is correct or incorrect. And TESOL people or linguists are going to like the distinction between a descriptive and a prescriptive grammar. I want to start out with these sentences as a thinking activity. Decide to yourself, or decide in yourself, if these sentences are correct or incorrect. John hit I. Who did you fight with yesterday? Please give that paper to Marge and I. And Mary likes ice cream. We're going to come back again to these four sentences at the end of the presentation. Okay, let's start out with a definition of grammar. So grammar is what we know. It represents our linguistic competence. Every human being who speaks a language knows its grammar. And generally, when we use the word grammar in this class, we will be discussing the grammar of word order, also known as syntax. Okay. A prescriptive, descriptive, and mental grammar um, are the three types of grammars we'll be referring to in this class. We're going to describe those in detail now. The first one is a mental grammar. So every native speaker of a language has an intrinsic, implicit, and unconscious knowledge of that language's grammar. In this class, we will refer to this knowledge as a mental grammar. Okay. Mental grammars for native speakers are believed to do the following. They generate the language that we speak and write, and they allow us to perform grammaticality judgments in a language. In a second language, um, it depends on the person. Second language speakers often have some implicit and some explicit knowledge of the grammar of their second language. Explicit means that they're able to uh, talk about it, describe it, that it was taught to them. Implicit is something that we get in our first language where it's just learned. Okay, a grammaticality judgment is when we say whether or not a form of a language is okay or not okay based on our mental grammar. So we say that it's either grammatical or ungrammatical. Okay, here's an example. Here's this sentence. Who did he think that was nice? If you're a native English speaker, you get a funny feeling when you hear the sentence. This feeling is an indicator of ungrammaticality. Linguists use an asterisk to indicate ungrammaticality. Okay, so here's the sentence, who did, who did he think that was nice, with an asterisk indicating that native speakers would not find this sentence to be grammatical. Okay. Here are some additional sentences, and you decide whether or not these sentences are grammatical for you. Okay. The first one, Mary and John went to the store on Tuesday for a loaf of bread. Number two, I'm wondering who that called me yesterday without leaving a message. Number three, the dog the cat chased likes to eat bones. And number four, I her saw. Okay, so I anticipate that you'll provide the following grammaticality judgments for these sentences. Um, I anticipate that number one, Mary and John went to the store on Tuesday for a loaf of bread, is an acceptable sentence based on your mental grammar. Um, but number two, I'm wondering who that called me yesterday without leaving a message, I would anticipate is ungrammatical for you. Number three is a little bit trickier. Um, there are two issues that go on with number three. The dog, the cat chase, likes to eat bones. Um, it's grammatical based on the structure of the sentence, although some of you may have problem because it's the cat chasing the dog. And so that might bother some of you that the meaning doesn't seem to be correct. And number four, um, I anticipate that all of you would say that it is incorrect. I, her, saw. Because we don't do sentences in that word order in English. Okay, ungrammatical sentences don't sound like something we would say, okay, or a native speaker would say. When you hear something that's ungrammatical, your reaction is something like, ooh, I don't think that's right, or mm, that doesn't really sound like English. Okay, so again, that's sort of the mental grammar. 
Let's switch now to a descriptive grammar and what that means. Descriptive grammar um, has to do with the field of linguistics. So the field of linguistics is the scientific study of language. Okay? It's not just translating one language to another, which is often what people think. Uh, this type of study is often done through the use of a descriptive grammar. A descriptive grammar attempts to model or explain mental grammar. Okay? We can't see what's happening in our mental grammar inside of our head, so descriptive grammar is used to try to describe it. Um, descriptive is a form of the word describe, so a descriptive grammar describes what it is that's happening in a language. Okay? Um, if we hear an English speaker say the following sentences, my dog has fleas, I like ice cream, John kissed his mother. Uh, after studying these sentences, a linguist might say something like, the word order of English appears to be subject, verb, object. Um, this statement is a type of descriptive grammar about English. I'm describing some information that occurs in the English I see native speakers using. Okay. Why might we need a descriptive grammar? Well, as I said, we're not able to directly observe what it is that's happening inside of our brain. And so we try to use a model to represent what it is that we're understanding from when we understand language. Um, this descriptive model can often predict the way that we use language. Let's switch now to a prescriptive grammar. A prescriptive grammar is related to the word prescribe. Prescriptive grammars attempt to tell people what to do with language. They um, prescribe the rules for a language. Okay? Prescriptive grammar always judges whether certain language forms are acceptable or unacceptable. And prescriptive grammar is always a conscious knowledge. Okay? This is something that we have to learn um, explicitly, where mental grammar is something that we learn implicitly and it's unconscious. Here are some examples of prescriptive grammar. The verb to be takes a nominative pronoun. Okay? To be, um, as in is in this sentence, it is me who helped John would be ungrammatical according to prescriptive grammar. Some of you, though, your mental grammar might say, oh, that sounds all right. Okay? But the prescriptive grammar says that we should say, it is I who helped John. Okay, here's a second example. Do not end a sentence with a preposition. Okay, um, we have, I don't know what to do it with. I don't know what to do it with. Okay, for prescriptivists, a prescriptive grammar says that that sentence is wrong. Okay, as a descriptive gram grammarian, um, I would say something like, that sentence is said by English speakers often. So it appears that English allows for that to be spoken. Um, however, the prescriptive grammar says, no, that breaks a rule, and so it's ungrammatical. Okay, here's kind of a review of our grammar. Um, I have here a couple of um, boxes that describe the grammar, and let's see if we can fill in the tops of the box to what kind of grammar we have. So the first one says it's a part of the mind of the speakers, it's intrinsic, and it generates language. Okay. The second one we have is generally created and used only by linguists. Okay? It describes people's language behavior. And the third type is generally created by writers, but it's used by anyone. It attempts to change people's language behavior. We might even use the word prescribe there. Okay? So using our words that um, give us a hint as to what type of grammar it is, here's how we would continue filling out that chart. So a mental grammar, it's the part of your brain that generates language. Okay? It's inside of your brain. Um, a descriptive grammar is a grammar that describes people's actual behavior. A prescriptive grammar is one that prescribes language behavior or often tells us that we should or should not be doing something, um, even when our mental grammar may say that's okay. Okay, here's what's interesting about these three types of grammar. Um, when people have a grammar question, when we say something like, oh, is this correct, or how should I be saying this? Okay, as a native speaker of English, I know how I should be saying it. When I have a question come up in my mind, it's a place where my prescriptive knowledge, my conscious knowledge, disagrees with my mental grammar. Okay, that's often what causes my conflict. 
If my prescriptive rules, the rules that tell me what I should do, agree with my mental grammar, then I usually don't have that kind of a feeling. I don't question those sentences at all. But sometimes I hear a sentence and I say, ooh, is that right? Or how should I be saying that? That's an indication that my prescriptive grammar and my mental grammar disagree, meaning that what we should do and what we actually say in language might be in conflict. Okay, so recall these sentences that we looked at at the beginning. We have this first sentence, John hit I. Uh, next sentence, who did you fight with yesterday? Third sentence, please give that paper to Marge and I. And the fourth sentence, Mary likes ice cream. Okay, let's take a look at these individually. For the sentence, John hit I, um, for most of us, our mental grammars and our prescriptive grammars would both say, ooh, that doesn't sound right. I know that that's not the way the sentence should be. Okay, so we should find that this one is ungrammatical. Okay, for the second one, who did you fight with yesterday? We might have some places now where our grammars start to disagree. So the mental grammars of most US Americans don't have a problem with this sentence. Okay, we hear someone ask a question like this often. Who did you fight with yesterday? Okay, however, um, we might wonder whether that's okay or not. We might look at the word who and say, ooh, is that supposed to be who or is that supposed to be whom? Um, is it okay to put with where it's at in the sentence or does it need to be at the beginning? Okay, so if you have a concern like that, it's because your grammars are actually disagreeing. You recognize that there's a prescriptive rule or might be a prescriptive rule that you may not be aware of, even though your mental grammar says, yep, I feel okay with this sentence. Okay, that's where our conflict occurs. For this sentence, okay, please give that paper to please give that paper to Marge and I. If you listen to your mental grammar carefully, it might tell you that the sentence is incorrect. However, um, we know some prescriptive rules about I and combining it with another person, so Marge and I. We are often taught words or taught rules consciously um, as we're learning our language that tell us that, oh, that might be okay. So in fact, this sentence is not grammatical in English but it's spoken quite a bit and it violates the prescriptive rules. It's often spoken though because of misunderstandings about prescriptive rules. Okay, this last sentence, Mary likes ice cream, um, you probably didn't hesitate before accepting it. Um, this is one where our mental grammars and our prescriptive grammars should agree. So for a summary for this presentation, okay, we talked about these three different types of grammars. A prescriptive grammar, which is often created to help standardize language. We'll talk a little bit more about how this is created in the next presentation. And it's often a rule book of what a person is supposed to do in the language. A descriptive grammar is just a description of how language is actually used. Usually it's created by a linguist. A mental grammar is not something that we'll ever see, but it's a part of our brain that generates language and generates grammaticality judgments on whether something is correct or not.